come in and things seem to change from um, one week to the next. So we really are grateful that you're here and particularly grateful to Panthers Catalogue for leading this morning for us and sharing their journey. Just to give you a little bit of context, really, um, these webinars came about um, because there's a strong feeling um, coming to us from schools that no one has um, a perfect solution, but everyone's worked really hard um, and everyone's done things that are worth listening to and worth sharing. So um, we're really grateful to those schools who've been um, willing when we've asked them and smiled sweetly at them and promised them biscuits post COVID that they will uh, help us and share the work that's gone on in their school. Um, so it really is for schools and by schools um, and sharing what's worked um, and an opportunity for you to ask questions. So you'll be relieved to know you don't have to listen to me talk for long this morning. I'm going to hand over in a moment. Um, but whilst you're listening, if you do have any questions, please, 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 at the end, ask them because that's what we're here for. And if we've got the opportunity to talk and discuss afterwards, um, it's an opportunity to reflect on practice, which is which is really helpful as well. So um, I'm going to be quiet now and hand over uh, to people far more interesting than I. Thank you. Okay, uh, morning everyone. Thanks for um, tuning in or signing in. Um, so we've just prepared a presentation uh, to go through what how we've approached the periods of lockdown at Panthers Catalog. Um, it's going to be a whistle stop tour. Um, uh, hopefully, we might be sharing some things that may be of use to you. Um, so if I just introduce myself and the school. Um, my name is Darren Thomas, I'm the head, and then with me today uh, is Mr Craig Lynch and Mrs Hannah Trinder. Uh, we're a semi-rural school in Merthyr with 315 children, uh, quite a diverse population within the school. We're centrally based geographically within our little village, and we like to think that that helps us because we have quite a high level of support from our parents. Um, the purpose of this presentation is please, we're not trying to teach granny to suck eggs. What we're trying to do is to just to share what we've been through. Uh, hopefully you'll take something from it, but we're not under any illusion that lots of, we, lots of things that we are sharing, you're probably doing yourselves in your own school. Um, we split the presentation up into four different parts. So how we approached the first period of closure, what we did when we came back, uh, how we approach the second closure and then I will come back on at the end just to talk briefly about the lessons learned. So this part of the presentation, I think we call it distributed leadership. So I'm now going to pass over to Mr Lynch and Mrs Trinder um, who will take you through the rest of the presentation. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So um, the first part of uh, our presentation really looks at uh, going back almost a year ago now to the enforced schooling closure number one uh, on Friday the 20th of March 2020 uh, and doing this section we're just going to look at our sort of initial response, the communication, support and, and how we motivated our learners and families, how we tried to use innovation and how our practice then evolved um, during uh, during the lockdown and to sort of consolidate for new learning. So our initial response to um, the first lockdown was to prepare paper packs for our pupils uh, just for one week, just to so that we could sort of identify our digitally excluded learners, where staff then delivered devices. I think we delivered 42 uh, different devices in total to some of our learners. Um, and during that week, then when children had the paper packs, we were able to prepare um, what we were already doing using things like Seesaw and Google Classroom, but make sure that parents were all ups, um, provided with logins and that they were all prepped ready for the following week for our learning to go um, online. I think communication played a huge part um, in that initial lockdown. School as a 
we deploy so we use social media to good effects we've got facebook we've got twitter we've got instagram um but the teachers the parents um app and a text messaging service was invaluable really at that time during the first month of lockdown we sent out if you look at the um there's a bar graph displayed on your screen we we, we sent out th over thirty two thousand texts to our families um but as you can see from that one large buy that reduces month on month um and this is the reason for that reduction really is is down to then the communication being passed from senior leaders to the parents is being passed on to the, the class teachers who now communicate uh, through CSO and and google classroom but then the, the beauty of using those two uh, platforms is that the parents are able to message back so it's direct communication between staff and and, and families uh, which is which has again proved very su successful. We've also, you know, the texts was have not just been used to um, give out information; they've been used to share updates, to offer support, and to also to celebrate our children's achievement um, during lockdown. In terms of then support, uh, alongside those text messages, uh, I think we recognise that there was a need to upskill our parents as well as our children. To be able to access the learning online so we produce quite a lot of how-to guides to access seesaw uh, google classroom but even then to, for, to help um, parents to connect to the internet at home you know lots of the people who borrowed devices from us needed help to to connect it to their own wi-fi so we produce lots of easy to access guides for, to help our parents and our families to uh, to be able to, to to take part in the learning in terms of motivation, um, it was very important you know, to maintain engagement. We had to motivate our learners. Um, every child in our school received a handwritten postcard uh, through the mail as home learning heroes. These were very popular, and you know, we had lots of nice comments on parents as, as it being a, a good boost. Uh, it costs a lot of money with with stamps, but it was a worthwhile exercise um, to, to to ensure that all children received one of those uh, postcards. But also we acknowledged our parents, just a small gesture, you know, um, of a postcard to them, thanking them for their efforts with their children at home, with a cup of tea and a biscuit, uh, just to know that they, just to make them know that they, you know, we were thinking of them and we appreciated all of their efforts. Um, and, and we also then tr try to sort of be innovative in, in what we were doing. Um, I think we recognised early that, you know, we wanted to, do something different and so we decided to come up with some challenges as a means of providing you know, alternative learning opportunities for our pupils and our families so we we came up with a series of um, different um, challenges lasting for a fortnight um, some examples are a healthy selfie challenge read to succeed the maths wizard challenge life skills challenge screen free challenge so a little bit different to our traditional curriculum um, and each one of those challenges contained in a series of engaging activities. These proved to be very successful. You know, we shared any resource, uh, any responses we got. We shared them on social media with our school community. Um, and then well, we, it, was, it, it did prove very successful. We, we had contact from no North Wales schools, Powys schools, schools in Cardiff as well, to ask if they could utilise resources that we we prepared. You know, so. Um, no, they are, that innovation then um, help to keep learning fresh and engaging for our learners. Um, and finally, we encouraged towards the end of that first lockdown for the staff to begin to create their own learning tutorial videos um, no, to push to, to introduce new learning um, topics uh, and to give that no to, uh, give an extra dimension really, to, to our um, to our distance learning. So I'm going to pass over now to our assistant head, Mrs. Trinder. Lovely, thank you. Cheers. So yeah, of course, on Monday the 29th of June, we returned to school um, and it was definitely a reason to celebrate. Uh, obviously, we wanted to mark this, this moment in time and we also wanted to mark the unique events that had happened through lockdown in a very special way and in a, a unique way for Pantascatla Primary School. 
So we came up with a, a school wide competition where the pupils got to design a poster um, for a mural that would go up in our school hall. Uh, we are very fortunate that just around the corner from our school uh, is Tease Two Sugars, the local graffiti artist who became quite well known um, throughout lockdown time. Um, so we utilised him as a member of our community and worked alongside him where we chose the winning poster, as you can see up on the screen, and it got put up onto our school hall and it looks amazing. And what that did for us it created a real excitement for the pupils to return and also see this for themselves when they did return in the summer term of course we um, had to consider a recovery curriculum for when we returned to school and we worked uh, uh, very together as a team uh, to ensure that we made everything that we did in our summer term uh, based on well-being of our pupils. We recognised that uh, that recovery rec curriculum uh, needed to mirror the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You know, we identified that we needed to meet the basic safety and social needs of our pupils um, in order to then move on to esteem and self-actualization. And um, so we carefully considered that with that, the decisions um, going forward and the logistical plans put into place um, because our a key focus for the pupils was their well-being and their reintegration back into the school life and for them to learn to learn again because obviously they they had lost that resilience to learning to some degree so as we return to school yes we did celebrate we are really fortunate enough here at Panthers Catalog to have a strong social network um, going on and a high connection with our parents uh, so we shared a lot on our social media, which proved popular and it proved worthwhile doing because uh, parents really connected to what we were doing moving forward into the reintegration back into school. Uh, one of the first things that we did was created pupil and parent questionnaires that went out uh, via these platforms. And we were really pleased to see that there was over 90% response from our school community. And it really helped us inform how we handled the next few weeks um, going forward. You know, we, we quickly identified that there were a lot of parents so anxious about sending their children back not necessarily the pupils of course we had some but generally it was more about the the parents so that helped us know that we needed to share most of our logistical plans you know on, on our social media platforms so we shared as much as we could um, a lot of images and videos of our school environment so that they could prepare um, their children to return back and obviously timetables and basically any logistical plan we shared as much as possible to try and alleviate um, any anxieties that were present. What we did find really encouraging was as we did return in um, June and obviously the pupils returned on a phased basis in smaller bubble groups, uh, we did have some families that decided not to send their children back in during that time. But as the children came in for their days and we shared uh, the photographs and videos of the activities and the you know the experiences that they were having in their classrooms um, those parents that decided not to send their children in actually phoned the school and said can we send them because they could see how happy the children were and they could really see the benefits of um, being within our school environment and they could also see that it was done in a safe manner you know and that we could um, you know safely look after our children whilst giving them a really happy time together. So uh, it, as we moved towards the autumn term, uh, we really wanted to build momentum with uh, the progress that we had made and learn, you know, reflect on the lessons learned from lockdown and our um, return to school in the summer. And we wanted to build and develop our strategies and processes within our school and continue with school improvement. Um, part of our recovery curriculum was about identifying the need to build resilience with our learners once again um, and encourage them to have their love of learning um, there like it was prior to lockdown. Uh, we had staff take anecdotal evidence of pupils and we really tried to use those to identify appropriate support for our pupils with was their emotional support needed you know and it identified any interventions that were necessary we really utilized our use of iris as a reflection tool during the autumn term 
Uh, it was a reflection tool for staff for their teaching and learning um, and the development of their pedagogical principles around the, the new normal, as we called it. But also we use it as a reflection tool for our learners where they were able to view the, the videos and you know, identify uh, the teaching and learning going on within the classroom. Our senior staff also met with the school council and our rights of a child committee to discuss the UNICEF um, rights of the child. We agreed the 16 articles that we um, placed around our school and created a focus of those through class charters. We really wanted to um, use the steps that we were making with towards our silver award um, as, as a heart of creating healthy classroom environments as the children reintegrated back into um, school. We found that the class charters really established expectations that came genuinely from the pupils and we found that that was quite key um, so that pupils could then reflect on the 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 learning environment and you know the boundaries that were going on within their classrooms and it set the children up for a really positive time throughout the autumn term. Of course, that it included a lot of pupil voice. We did listening to learners in the autumn term, not only to evaluate teaching and learning, but also to hear their thoughts on their well-being and you know where we meet in the mark and in what they truly needed. You know, so we wanted to to hear what they had to say. Uh, something that we also did in the autumn term was we conducted a, um, some action research regarding our feedback policy. We identified that the school has strong relationships with their pupils and parents, um, but that relationship with the pupils was really evident during lockdown, and that's how we saw such a high success of engagement in March, March's lockdown, because there were such strong relationships between pupil and, and teacher. Uh, so we really wanted to uh, embed that into the way that we delivered feedback to our pupils. Uh, you know, we we had a policy there, but we wanted to move towards this uh, this culture of conferencing with pupils so that pupils had one to one time with their teacher where they would get specific and personalised feedback on their learning um, in order for the, the pupil then to take a lot more responsibility for their learning and in order for them to identify their own steps forward. And that was all rooted in the relational side um, between the pupil and the teacher. So back to you, Mr. Lynch. Thank you, Alchemist. Um, and so I suppose the next uh, step on our journey was to look at our timetabling. Uh, straight away, we, you know, as a senior leadership team, we wanted to give the, the pupils an opportunity to re-establish friendships and networks. Um, so we wanted to adapt our timetable to reflect that. So I suppose the actions that we, um, we took was to first of all re-establish our afternoon break time, giving the pupils extra time socialising each other on the yard and, out, and being outdoors more. Uh, part of that as well was we we purchased a class pack of Mocky watches. The Mocky watches are um, a Fitbit watch, but we got a class pack of them where we can sort of give the give a class uh, ownership of them for a day. The children wear those watches for the full day and we track their physical activity throughout that day so looking out for trends of certain children who might not be moving enough uh, but what we've it was really effective um, we found that pupils who we perhaps thought may not be very active actually with the introduction of marquee watch really wanted to try and increase their steps so that, that's been another um, really um, useful addition to this to school resource um, but also as well trying to use the outdoors um, we've, we're very, very fortunate in our where we are geographically to have lots of space and lots of green space as well. So it's optimising those school grounds um, to get to you know, encouraging staff to plan purposeful learning activities using our outdoors uh, whenever possible. We have been a lead creative school previously um, and we've had lots of experience using the outdoors as part of a lead creative school. So it's, we've encouraged staff to use the, the, the skills they've sort of gained the last previous few years. Um, to sort of try and incre increase uh, the, the people's engagement um, whilst using the outdoors. <clears throat> I suppose and another what, what we try to do as well is is to provide a sense of normality for all of our pupils. It's been a, you know, a very um, different time for everybody. So 
wherever possible, we, we you know, using risk assessments, we try to allow you know, some normality in the school. For examples, being uh, live music lessons, you know, the, the, the peripatetic music teacher unable to come into school. So we facilitated that through teams. Uh, we got children doing you know, guitar lessons and things like that, which you know, trying to give them their normal experience of being in pant school. Um, cycle proficiency training, you know, again, utilizing the outdoors as much as possible. Um, and where, you know, wherever we were able to as well, ensuring that external visitors, like you know, very important ones like Santa, still being able to come into the building, you know, dealing to social distancing, um, just to provide like that sense of normality for these children. <clears throat> well-being, um, as we've already been spoken about, you know, pupil well-being was at the forefront of our minds throughout this process. But we've also, you know, wanted to, wherever possible, place a big emphasis on staff well-being. Part of this process is we've reduced staff meetings, um, you know, taken one amount a month where we don't have a staff meeting. Um, and as you know, class is a well-being session, we've done a few, a few examples for that one one session a month was to go for a staff walk in the local area we got local the, the top ponds so all the staff put their coats on it, it wasn't a particularly nice day we all checked our coats on and it was great it, it was lovely you know to get out with your colleagues go for a walk go for a chat That's some things you don't get to do doing the, you know, the busyness of school uh, another example would be you know the lights off by 3 30. all the staff expect to leave the building by 3 30 with a bar of chocolate, which is provided by Mr. Thomas, um, to, to go off uh, and to do anything but schoolwork in that time, you know, to, so you know, really place an emphasis on their well-being. Um, we've put in position a, a well-being champion within the school, who organises a well-being breakfast uh, once a month for the for the staff. Uh, and it's not just you now providing a bacon roll and, and a coffee, it's looking at well-being strategies, breathing techniques, um, you know, stress relieving methods that staff can use during these difficult times. Uh, so we, we're really focusing on our, our staff's well-being as well as our pupils. And finally, I'm sure that some of you have um, heard that we've been very fortunate to receive, um, well, not to receive, to, to, to obtain Max, our lovely therapy dog. She's on the screen there. He, um, he's absolutely transformed our school. You know, uh, he's, you know, he's wandering around us if he's always been here. But the, the, the impact he's had upon staff and children on their happiness um, has been excellent. You know, so really exciting times uh, in terms of well-being. Um, we're very fortunate to have Max, and um, we're looking forward to sort of what the future holds of having um, our therapy dog in the school. Um, just finally from me, um, in terms of preparing for future lockdowns or periods of isolation, just things that we've put in place. I, I think as a school, we've firmly embedded the station rotation model of blended learning. Um, in foundation phase, an enhanced and continuous provision now, all classes have activities on seesaw, so the children are doing independently within the class, so that if we ever have to go back into future lockdowns or into isolation these children are used to use independently and upskill themselves so we're not solely relying on parents um you know to facilitate the learning at home similarly with key stage two um their mission approach to missions has all been through google classroom so when children go off to do their independent missions in the afternoon they're accessing materials constantly using seesaw using google classroom so that, you know, like, like, like I said previously, if we ever have to go back into lockdown, you know, their independence and their skills will be much, you know, will be, will be a lot stronger than they would have been. Also, each class has um, now has a virtual classroom. Um, and you probably see on the screen that those snazzy bitmojis, which the children love. Um, so we've all uh, represented ourselves as a bit bitmoji. Each virtual classroom contains every single link that the children need. For example, hub, uh, seesaw, giglets, you know, active learn, everything in one place. There's no scrambling around for links to things. Um, so again, you no, know, it's it's putting everything in one place, and the children know where they are, the families know where to find them. Um, and finally, um, we've sort of we've made a decision as a senior management team to to go paperless with our um, with our homework. So 
all homework now is set online using Seesaw. Pupils receive a half termly homework grade of activities. You now they choose their own, you know, they, they, they choose the direction of their own learning, pick an activity a week. Um, and it's all based on the online platforms that we've been using um, throughout this process. So again, it's making them use those so they're not forgetting the skills they've been taught now um, and just strengthening their skills. So um, that's it from me. I'm going to hand back to uh, Mrs. Trinda now. Hey, thank you. So I'm going to discuss uh, our journey moving into this year. Of course, on Wednesday, the 16th of December, we had the enforced closure early before Christmas, and that led into the lockdown in January up until present day. Uh, we felt well we were in a much stronger position this time around for lockdown um even before march 2020 you know seesaw and google classroom was embedded but the journey that we've had over the past year um and particularly the the work that we did in the autumn term with developing and embedding those blended learning approaches within our classrooms really helped us to be in a stronger position in january because we were proactive and we wanted to set our children up for success in the autumn term. So if at any point they did go into lockdown, uh, into an isolation period, or as January came, we went into lockdown, they were extremely confident and they were upskilled and that they were independent using these platforms. And we did find that that to be evident in January. Of course, we've been tracking our engagement since March last year, but as, it, as it's gone on, and particularly this time around, we've tweaked our engagement trackers and made them more thorough, and we've really found them to be beneficial. Um, the, the, the tracker really crunches the numbers and allows us to um, identify information that can inform how we proceed forward. Uh, it breaks it down into free school meals so that we can identify and support those appropriately. It breaks it down into day percentage of engagement, even certain sessions. Um, and it's really helped us to uh, reflect what's going well, what's not going well, and tweak our practices and obviously inform interventions and support to families and pupils as necessary. So in January, we decided as, as a school to um, hit the ground running with live lessons and catch up sessions. Of course, there were a few staff that were a little bit nervous about this, you know, reliant on technology. I think we can all resound that that, you know, that was the reality. Um, but as soon as we did the first session, every member of staff was like, oh, my goodness, this is the favorite, my favorite part of the week. Uh, we really found these sessions to be beneficial because they allowed they were an effective tool for us to um, develop well-being check in with our pupils see if they're happy and safe um, it, it created a platform for collaboration and for them to share um, their learning their thoughts their feelings um, and also it we again have seen another layer of skill development through this platform We've been very impressed with how resilient our learners have been to use in this platform. Of course, lower down the school, it relies a lot on um, parents helping out. Um, however, year five and six, very independent using this platform and the way that they've navigated between um, Teams, Google Classroom. Right now, we're going to get at the start. Let's use the whiteboard. Can everyone, you know, the collaboration element um, with using Microsoft Teams. We've been very impressed. I think the children at some times have been better than, than our staff and they've coached through. And, you know, it's, it's been a real opportunity again to develop our DCF skills. Um, and what was interesting was as we were completing our engagement trackers, we quickly realised that we had our most engagement on the sessions that we did our live lessons and catch up sessions. Uh, so that was really encouraging to see that pupils really connected with it. Um, and we were happy that it, it was a positive um a positive step for us and even with parental feedback you know they also commented that it was a, a real boost for their child at home whilst in lockdown uh, of course, like I said, we were in a much stronger position in January um, going forward into lockdown and we really wanted to develop um, momentum with that and build on and develop our distance learning and blended learning approaches that we've worked so hard on over the, the past year. Uh, Google Classroom and Seesaw are wonderful platforms and we've really found them to be such a, a benefit to us as a school um, in order to deliver teaching and learning and whilst also developing the independence of our pupils. Um, Google Classroom 
has a, a, you know a range of tools i'm not going to talk you through them because i'm sure we're all au fait with it um and if not you, you know you can contact us later on and, and we can discuss that in more depth um but just some of the tools for instance the comment tools in order for us to feedback and give power pumps um, on a personal level has been really useful so that people can go away they can edit and improve up level their work and, and return it and resubmit it back that wasn't something that we were necessarily doing consistently last march you know it, it was just about engaging and getting the children and consolidating learning but a real emphasis this uh, this lockdown has been less less continue with our learning less you know less progression um so the the tools of the feedback has been really useful for that again with seesaw uh, there's a really powerful tool where you can voice record and send personalised feedback um, and we've really found that students respond to that because they're hearing the teacher's voice and they feel like it's really personalised to them so they respond well to the feedback there um, and that's been consistently used you know we asked staff um, to all take this approach in January so that it was consistent throughout the school and again we've seen that be very beneficial to pupils upskilling their work editing and improving it just like we would within our classrooms. Um, this time round, we've been again more consistent with the teacher led uh, videos uh, tutorial videos so alongside our live lessons we were doing teacher videos um which we did start in the summer term last year but this time again it's been consistent on a weekly basis um for a range of tasks and we find that again through our engagement tracker children have responded to those tasks really well and we think it's because they're hearing and seeing their teacher you know it feels a little bit more of a norm to them than just reading instructions on the screen. So we found that powerful as well. The tools on CISO and Google Classroom allow for um, differentiation uh, of groups, which has been really handy. Um, and again, we have taken the steps to use uh, consistently a lot more assessment for learning strategies. Uh, we wanted to make sure that that was embedded into what we were doing this lockdown. So things like the traffic lighting, cup reflections, where they, they have to break down what challenged them, how they understood the progress they were making, getting our children to be reflective learners. Um, and something that we've asked them to do every Friday as since the beginning is they reflect on their week, they, you know, developing their oracy skills, um, encouraging them to put language to their learning. Uh, they created videos, they've been creating videos on a Friday, reflecting on their week where they had to self-assess their, their learning throughout the entire week. Um, we found that those strategies have been much more embedded this time round, um, and that's been an evolution of our processes here at Pantoscathlog, and it's been a, a continual build upon um, what we were doing in the autumn term, the blended learning approaches that we embedded, we just wanted to con continue with that journey at this lockdown, this lockdown period. Um, just recently, before half term, we then also brought in back in our missions approach. Um, via the distance learning for our key stage two pupils where they get to choose their learning. Again, it's about them taking ownership of their learning because we feel that we get much better standards and quality um, when they feel that they own it and that, that they have a responsibility towards their own learning. So the missions really promotes that for us. Um, and that's been really encouraging to see the, the quality of work coming back and how the pupils engage with that because they have a voice, they have a choice in their learning. OK, I'll hand back to you, Mr. Thomas. Thanks. Um, so that gives you uh, a very brief outline of what we've sort of taken on board over the last year. Uh, whatever we did, though, we always had in the back of our mind the so what question. So whatever we put in place, what was the impact of it? So we've sort of summarised that in that we had less than 10% of our pupils who didn't engage with us. There were legitimate reasons for that. Um, so the, the the focus for those type of families then moved into a sort of well-being forum. So they would have been engaged with through our work with the Education Inclusion Officer uh, and other outside agencies. Our blended learning and distance learning approaches evolved and were successful for us. 
and they're going to be something that we're going to try and maintain when the children and when we to return back to normal operations we found that it's encouraged um this upskilling of pupils with the dcf and it's also encouraged independence so we're hopefully going to bring that back in the classroom forum when the children all the children return um we became much more self-reflective in a smaller scale. So it wasn't just about finding something that worked and just sticking with that. We constantly self-reviewed what we were doing. So if we saw a dip in engagement, it was about what the reason was in that engagement. And I think uh, Mr. Lynch and Mrs. Trinder have elaborated upon how our processes evolved over time. And that a lot of that was to do with the maintenance of engagement, um, well-being and significant learning on impact. And it wasn't just about the pupils, it obviously had the staff, but also families. So we often heard anecdotal evidence of our staff where they may have spoke to a parent who was obviously upset about how things were going. And it was about us then as schools showing a human side to ourselves and engaging with those families and perhaps saying, look, give yourselves or give your child a day off and then come back to the learning or possibly then the challenges that Mr Lynch shared go off task because if they were doing something other than what we were sending out it was still a learning opportunity um, and I think that has led on to then my final point it's shown the human side of our school uh, and a human side as a profession. So what it's done for us is to strengthen relationships with our families, and hopefully that will be maintained. Um, again, going back to how I started the presentation, we're well aware that lots of what we've shown today would have been things that your schools and schools across the consortium would have been implementing. But if there's one thing that you think we could share with you in greater detail, please get in touch. We've sort of cherry picked or identified things that we think may be of interest to you um, down to little things like or what we consider little things in terms of our use of social media uh, down to big things with Max the dog we probably there's going to be a small percentage but there may be somebody looking at this thinking that we're interested in adopting a welfare dog the staff uh, Mr Lynch Mrs Trinder the school staff myself we're open to us, you contacting us and we will give you a warts and all rundown of everything that we did. So hopefully, if you are going through that process, it'll be much more efficient because you won't come across the hurdles that we came across. Um, so thanks for tuning in. I was watching the participants. Nobody dropped out, which is a good sign. Um, and just to finish, your contact details. Um, so if anyone wants to get in touch, please do, um, and we're more than happy to share with you whatever we've um, we've got. Thanks. Fab. Um, thank you all so much. I really enjoyed that. I want to get a Max, but my husband's frightened of dogs, so I'm not allowed one at the moment. But I, I feel like I could do with a therapy dog in my home at the moment. Um, it was really...